Recently, we visited with Nick Otterback of Jabiru USA as he explains the use of plenum air ducts to cool your aircraft engine. Yeah, I'm trying not to swear because I'm on camera. Once you but... figure it out, it's not too bad. It's a composite air duct. This one's got a little dimple in there for our cam lock and our oil door, but otherwise, these are these the, the air ducts that would come with the engine. Uh, you do have to do some trimming and things like that and fitting to get them down onto the cylinders as tight as possible. But all the engines come with these. Even if you have a Sonix um, with a Gen 1 through 3, they have a metal air duct, that they, a kit that they sell with their Firewall Ford kit that you build and put in there and serves the same purpose, okay? so. Um, the air ducts are important. They should be run on the engine. The only time we probably don't ever run these on an engine is doing an oil change. You know, we'll, we'll take the cowling off, take the air ducts off because we want to be able to get to that oil filter over the right. So we'll pull it out and run it for a few minutes. But um, don't fly them without air ducts. Don't try to ground run them for a long, long time without air ducts because they're, they're important. Even if the engine doesn't have a cowling on them, they're important to how the air goes over the cylinders. Okay? So couple of cool things to talk about when we're building these. When Jabber sends you your firewall forward kit or, or, or well, with the engine, or if you even have one that's flying right now, these little, these are metal tabs actually, these are little stainless steel tabs that are on here. Um, uh, some of the old installations, they actually, there's a fiberglass piece here, you drill through the fiberglass, he knows what I'm talking <laughs> about. You bolt it on the engine and after a couple of years, they're oil soaked, they're heat soaked, and all of a sudden your air ducts don't stay attached to the engine any longer, it's in right? It's a bucket list for the winter to repair what's... To re yeah, you got either fiberglass yeah. or repair it. So, so um, we've been doing these for a long time, probably five, six, seven years ago, something like Jabru started sending these little stainless steel tabs with the air, with the uh, engines. Um, in your engine that you get, you get the lowered mounts and a regulator and some springs and things, and you get these little tabs. And so you can see they're just put on with pop rivets, but they take all the, the heat and the load of the, the, the valve cover screw to hold them on, okay? Take the vibration away as well. Yeah, what's that? They will absorb the vibration better yeah, than yeah. the fiberglass. Oh, yeah, better than the fiberglass. Yeah. So, so we have those. The other thing we do have on here, and they send with new engines um, and with the firewall corkets, this little tube right here, okay? So this air duct actually goes on this side of the engine here, and you can see that tube is pointing backwards. Well, what it's pointing at is your ignition coil, mm -hmm. okay? So um, if you have an older engine that maybe the builder didn't put it in, or you know they didn't come with them 10 years ago or 12 years ago uh, get yourself some aluminum tubing from somewhere and make yourself a, a, a blast tube if you can see on the inside we have them protrude onto the inside of the air duct here and comes in a little ways we use some epoxy and flock to make it a good bead on there and so when this is pressurized it'll blow air through that and keep the ignition coils cool because you can imagine this coil especially it's up on top of the engine so all the heat's up there on top of the cowling you got to have some airflow over that. Uh, the other the air ducts down on the floor over there, um, it will have a similar looking air duct that, uh, tube that goes down to that ignition coil as well. Okay? So those are very important. Other important things that you have to do when you get these. If you look on the inside, we've got these neat little, neat little dams right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. There's not one over number uh, one there. Probably didn't need it yet or decided we didn't need it for our installation. But these right here are how we equalize the heat from front to back. So if we're doing our flight testing and we find that, wow, this one's, you know, this one's running really cool and this one's running really hot or something like that, we have these baffles that we will install inside the air ducts, do flight testing, um, write down cylinder head temperatures and stuff like that, and then look at the temperatures. So well, you can imagine these, these are in here, right? And the engine that's sitting on the engine like this, Number five back here, or number six, everybody thinks those will run the hottest. They generally don't run the hottest. Actually, with a jabber, it's typically the center cylinders that run the hottest. Because all the air goes in here, packs in here, and drops down, kind of sort of misses that cylinder altogether. So that's why there is a baffle over that cylinder. Mm -hmm. And so that will help deflect or disturb whichever one you call it, because this is a pressure cowling, right? We're building, we have differential pressure inside the air duct versus the pressure outside the belly and that's what draws air through. So this will disturb the air, push it down through and help it draw down through that cylinder so that cylinder gets more air. So it's very important to know what your cylinders are doing. 
And even if you don't know what to do with them, I tell guys, you know, you get your cell phone or whatever, and I mean, don't take a picture right on takeoff, but you're three or 4,000 feet cruising around doing your testing, take a picture with your cell phone or write them on your notepad or your knee pad um, and call me and we can discuss which ones to extend or which ones to shorten depending on what you want to have. And, you know, you're never going to really have all these cylinders running within 10 degrees of each other. It's just, now the Gen 4s kind of sort of do. <laughs> I, I won't lie to you. Here's they my do. Card. Let's get it <laughs> they, they do really good. But the idea is to get these cylinders running reasonably well. You know, that way you don't have a 150 degree cylinder here and a 300 degree cylinder <clears> back <throat> here. You want, let's get this one cooled down, let this one warm up, and let's get them sort of kind of even. The other part that's really important to here is you see this front baffle right here. See how it's, you can see that's kind of comes up about halfway on the air duct, right? Right here. Okay. Okay, that's important. That is not installed on it. You have to do that as a builder. Um, it's pretty easy. You glue it to the back side, uh, bond it on with some epoxy and flock. We've just painted these so they look good. All right. And what that does, that comes up about halfway up onto this cylinder here. That makes sure all the air goes up into the top. Um, I've had builders not put that in because they thought they were restricting airflow. And what was ha what happens if you don't put that in? 50% of your air goes under and 50% goes over. And so, yeah, number one and number two stay really, really cool, but the rest of them get really hot in a hurry. Mm. So, right there. And if you go look at some of the engines that still have air ducts on, you can see what I'm tell talking about. When you look inside there, you can see it comes up about half the radius of the cylinder. So it's, it's keeping all the airflow on top of the cylinder. Now, Take this one up. isn't gonna go all the way down out here because Jason's put the screws back in so we don't lose them. Mm -hmm. But if you look out on the inside, it's it's you're only exposing the last two cell and, uh, last two fins on yeah. the inside for the generation four. Okay, on the lay, uh, other engines, it's about four or five fins, but you'll see where it fits comfortably and it's not stretched out. But the big thing I wanna show about it is when you look at this, it's down in them cylinders. It's down in those fins. Um, I've had plenty of builders who fit them and they just kind of sit on top. You're gonna lose all sorts of airflow underneath it and outside out the sides. So when you're fitting them and kind of doing a little sanding and trimming here, they need to fit nice and tight <coughs> down on top of the cylinder heads. Mm -hmm. So these don't bolt down at all, right? It's just a press fit? No, they, no, they, they bolt down. Do they? Okay. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't yeah. Been so yeah, look at the little, yet, so. little tabs right there. Okay. Yeah. They, build, yeah, they go right on there. Those. Okay. He just put them back in so we wouldn't lose the valve cover. Okay. And there's no spring on the inside. For the there's no spring on the inside of these because of how tight they are. On the Gen 4s, it's up front right here. There's a little tab right up here. Yep. See that little tab? Mm -hmm. And there's a little tab with a spring. Mm -hmm. And if you look on the air duct he's holding, right there in the front, there's a little oh, okay. clip. Now, um, Gen 1 through 3s, that clip is right here on right. the side. Right. And so what you do, and actually if you wanted to look, we can go look on this airplane later, it's got a Gen 3 in it. Um, and that one, you'll have, you put a wrap of safety wire around the center cylinder, and a little hook on the safety wire, and you hook, you attach the spring to that. Mm -hmm. So that's what holds it down. Because even on those, it'll blow up. Uh, with the Generation 4, with the square, I mean the cylinders are squarish, you know, they fit down in there so much tighter, mm -hmm. they just really can't come out with pressure. They just can't pop out, but they want to keep the front end down. Where the other ones with the rounder barrels and the, th the cylinder fins being much smaller, the air duct can come out out of, out of those. So that's why they have the, the spring on the center in here. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Diamond Doors at DiamondDoors.com. Flying Eyes at FlyingEyesOptics.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. All, whether it's a Gen 4 or Gen 3, these CHTs, you notice we've got them tucked down inside the cylinders, not going to hurt anything. We've used little zip ties, you can drill a hole in the fins or whatever you want to do, that's fine. Keep them tied down. The Gen 4s go to the stud in between the 
spark plug. You, can, you actually can see them a lot better on this side, but you can see the CHTs have gone down below the spark plugs. Um, if you have an older engine, a Gen 1 or a Gen 2, definitely Gen 1s because you can't do it, they'll have the larger probe uh, plug over the spark plug. Normally, we would, we, the other engines have a spark plug lead under the spark plug, right? Uh, you guys, Some of you guys have got that. I know you probably do and a few others. So when you're looking at that, when you install the CHTs, that spark plug, you got to take that crush ring off, put the CHT on it, and put the crush ring back on it. So you don't want the cylinder, the CHT, up against the head for the ones that are under the spark plug because you can get exhaust. You know, it doesn't seal the head at that point, and so then your, your probe is actually sealing the head. So um, this is a, a nicer, this isn't many more accurate. The temperature really doesn't change in that position. It's just a maintenance thing now. So now you don't have to worry about taking spark plugs off and taking the cylinder head temperature probes out all at the same time. They just stay permanently installed. So as long as we're sticking around the front of the engine here, we're talking about this. We'll, Brian brought up this right here. This is something we do here at Arian on our Lightnings, but you could do it on just about anything else. Um, the oil pan has cooling fins on the oil pan, right? And they're there for a reason. And so if you talk about a Jabiru airplane installation or on a Zenith Cruiser or a 601 or something like that, when the oil coolers on those, and uh, we'll go look at that Jabiru a little later, but the oil cooler on those bolts to the bottom down here, okay, on those installations. When you look at the throat going into the oil cooler, they actually leave the top of that open. So air goes in and bleeds up the top of the fins and bleeds back down under the fins. So the air, the fins have to have air across the fins somehow. They need to have them. If it's a farwell Ford kit from us, we've kind of figured that out with the kit and what you're going to get. On our Lightning, because we want to have a nice clean cowling, really nice tight, tight cowling, our oil cooler is actually over there remotely mounted. It's up on the side with a NACA scoop. So we don't have any cooling air that can go over our fin. So we've, our fins, so we've built that scoop right there. So if you look at our cowling, the cowling's on the floor over there. It's got a little one inch tall, three inch wide little hole in it. And that one's got like a And that big scoop on the side, that big huge scoop on the side of this cowling here is for an oil cooler. It's the same as this one would have, okay? So that's for cooling air over your fins. It's important to have. Sonics kind of does the same thing. You know, they put the oil cooler back here on the Sonics underneath, right. and that whole oil pan and everything it's got the little tiny hole and they got those baffles running down the sides. At least all the ones I've seen have been done like that. All we notice is the oil just dribbles down the first couple of panes in the oil cooler. The oil cooler never fills up. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, the first 10 or 15 hours of flying the prototype up there and going, why is our oil temperature? We got, and you'd, you'd, you'd touch your oil cooler and the front was hot and the back was ice cold. And we, you know, so anyways. So you fill it from the bottom up, not top down. Yeah, bottom, yeah. fill bottom, it up from the bottom so it fills it up and then it drains back on the top. Mm -hmm. That way it fills up, but that's how we do it, and it does make a difference. We've, it, I mean, we'd come back from flights, touch the old cooler, and the front half was hot, and the back was, it was just, it was not getting, it was not filling the cooler up. So, uh, anyway, so that's your oil cooling system. We like to use, we prefer to use, these are, this is, um, in the kits that we sell, you'll get these, uh, you know, aero quip tile, look, these reusable looking lines. We buy them from Phoenix, it's uh, just a manufacturer, but... Um, there's all sorts of manufacturers that make this. This is the black line that we we provide in our kits now. You're all used to the braided stainless steel stuff that you cut it and it pokes your fingers and bleed all over the place. This is a nylon braided line. Um, it's nylon braided. It does have uh, stainless braiding on the inside of the rubber, but it won't get to you. You can cut it with a shear. There are three little dots on that dipstick. And say, uh, that's with the new Gen 4. Otherwise, on the other ones, they'll have a hashed area. You know, it'll, it'll be a flat stick with a hashed area. And there are three dots, low, high, and then a middle range. Never run it above the middle range. Um, these engines, like this one's on the bottom mark. It's been sitting on the bottom mark the entire time we've been flying this engine. And that's where it likes to sit because of crankcase volume, right? Mm -hmm. So there's only, much, only so much volume in there. And if you put five quarts of oil in this, it's going to blow two quarts overboard. And it's going to run high oil temperatures and be a pain in the butt for a while until it does that. So always run them on, on the bottom mark to the middle mark. After you fly your engine enough, you'll learn where your oil really wants to sit. Um, I, had, I have a guy who calls, oh, my engine's using a lot of oil. You know, I land and on cross country, it's on the bottom mark, I add a half a quart. Well, 3.37 or 3.75 or whatever, three and three quarter quarts is the capacity of this sump. Mm -hmm. And what we do when we do an oil change, we drain all the oil out of it, 
we put three quarts in the engine, we test run it for leaks, and then we top it with another quarter to a half a quarter oil, and that's it. So, you know, if you go and add in a half, you know, from the middle mark to the top mark, there is not a half a quarter, one quarter. It's like a quarter quart, so it's not much difference. Mm -hmm. So when we, we talk about flying our old Cherokees and our old Cessnas, we always wanted to add some oil for a long cross country. Don't do that to your Jabiru um, because it'll run hot oil temperature, number one, and then it's going to blow it all overboard, all over the bottom of the airplane. Or it's going to fill your oil recovery bottle up every time you get in there. There's always oil in it. So, so let's make sure we keep it there, okay? These engine classes are offered a couple times during the year at Jabru USA Aryan Aircraft. So if you are interested in learning more, give them a call. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel. We invite you to subscribe, hit that like button, and ding the bell so you don't miss a single episode.